Hey, welcome to Tools on Tech. So this change log video is a bit later than usual. And that's because last weekend I was moving my desk setup, everything from the studio back home, mostly because I just wanted to have easy access and just sit down in my workspace whenever I felt like it. That's a different video. Today we're doing the change log and I'm gonna go start and have a look at it. Let's dive into the change log. You see the 10.4 release followed up straight with the 10.5 release. And it's becoming a bit of a joke, but it's also something that, yes, it's beta, but having to pick between nightly builds that could break every day and the production builds where from you now know that like if there's a new release and you want a stable version, you're better off just like waiting a couple of days there's a gap there like there's people like me that i do like the new versions and i would love to test or do something but i can't do nightly i can't just start my day with logseek not working at all um so i really hope that they'll get to the point where they start releasing like a test version so that people like me can be on the test version like the once a month version that might have bugs and then we fix that and a production version which you know comes two weeks later or maybe once every three months that has these things crystalled out and that's been running for a while. I really hope that they'll get to that point once we hit 1.0. Now let's have a look at the enhancements. Then let me close the thing so we can focus. And the first enhancement is the new UI components. So what does that mean? How does that look? Let me open the page for it. And what you see is these really nice user interface buttons there's things like the toast button here callback handle custom items you can click over this it's interesting to look at but for most end users the question might be so you know <laughs> i don't see this coming back the main benefit of having like a standard user interface set up is that developers people that make plugins now have a selection of items they can use to make their plugins look consistent within logseq anybody that's used logseq for a while and has been messing with plugins knows that at some point it just looks messy because people just quickly make something in html so that they have something to get data filled in but it doesn't look consistent there's not like the same user interface and for someone that's a bit technical like me no problem i'll just figure it out i just you know think it's like it looks a bit wonky and that is a feel thing but that's it will get the job done but as an end user you at some point just want consistency you want to be able to go like hey this is how logseq looks this is how it works and once you know these components then everything will be the same so i'm really looking forward to plugins using this and getting into a more consistent layout because this looks really nice it's nice and consistent in layout setup things that work it's fluent, you can see like there's animations in it. If your plugin is getting updated with this, then send me a tweet or something because I want to spend time looking at your plugin and showing this actual in practice. Even if it's just one or two components, the difference is staggering, so there should be a video about it. Then we get to the next enhancements and that will be the better block selection. Now, what does that mean? It means that you can now not only just select a couple of blocks, but you can also unselect one and it's clear which ones are selected. So you can see this whole selection is done and it just takes these two. So now if I copy this, then demo shouldn't be taken over. Let me go to a sandbox page for that. I'm supposed to have a sandbox page, but you know, sometimes create the page sandbox. So I'll paste it in here and as you can see, I only get two items in there. So that's good, that's that's exactly what I wanted. Now, one thing to keep in mind though, um, that is, and let me add this to favorites. Oh, it's already favorite, cool. If you do a block selection like this and you try deselecting things, that doesn't work because you have the parent selected, it will always copy everything. So be careful when you do like multi-layered stuff, you can't select the parent and then deselect a couple of children. That was like the only thing that I hit that was like annoying. Then next enhancement is the plugin APIs. I looked at it and I don't really think it changes a lot for most end users. It's mostly more consistency for people that do plugin development to make sure that when they send something to Logseek, there's less bugs and it's more consistent. 
for us as end users, what that will mean is that when you're using plugins and they're doing something, there's less chance that if something goes wrong, the bug is on Logseek's side, meaning that the plugin developer can actually fix it in short order. And then the next enhancements is the enhancement of the left sidebar. So things that were done, I'm not 100% sure. I didn't use it a lot, but you can resize. One of the main thing though, is that there's now a nice right click menu and that's clear that shows uh, the shortcut keys that are there. Most of this stuff I could do by just having the right combinations like the shift click to open in sidebar. But one of the things I do like is that now it's become more easy to see like what the back end this file was. I can right click and say like, hey, I wanna open this in a directory. I wanna open it in a default app, meaning that you know I can get to the source of the file to fix something or edit it. And then the last bit that's in here is just a couple of translations. I am not going to attempt that. As said, I don't speak that many languages. Now that we had the enhancements, I'm gonna go looking at the fixed issues. Um, this is our mostly small bug fixes, things that are improved, and I'll get some of the highlights out of it. First of all, we had the hotfix for the crash in the French translation. This was the reason why a new version was released. If you had a specific setup of French translation in the screen, the whole thing would crash and that just isn't good. Now what happened, a nil value was passed. For people that aren't using technical stuff all the time, there's a difference between something being empty and something being nil. Empty is like if you have no string, so and that makes it easy. A computer given a no string, an empty string, will just print nothing because it goes like, this is empty, this is nothing, I'll print nothing. But if you give a computer a nil, that means that it is a void. It's absence of anything and a lot of coding will crash then because it will say like this is not what it was expected from a programming perspective that is nice because nil shouldn't happen and then you want things to at least you know give a bug report or something so you can fix it um, but it is something that can happen here where it gets mistaken sometimes where you want an empty but you get a nil and then the problem is that software after it will crash hard because it goes like, I can't deal with void. I was expecting either empty string or some words here. And um, you know, happens, it's fixed now. Uh, small things like typos. Then we get to the highlight page aliases in search results. Now this is something that hit me sometimes, but I wasn't aware of it. So when you're searching and you would find an alias, then this bit wouldn't light up. So what would happen is it would have found Vicky, but it would just go like, okay, I don't know what to highlight here and you wouldn't see it. Now you see it. Now, if you have an alias, then you can see, okay, the reason this is lighting up is because the alias contains the word. Then we have the prevent jumping when hovering over left sidebar. Now I could talk about how this looks, but they made like a really nice video on the bug page for it. Let me scroll down there, you can see it. So what happens is if you move over a text like this, it would move everything down. And that means that your mouse would highlight something else, meaning that it would scroll back and then the whole system would repeat. This happens sometimes in web development. And this is a bit what you get. It will just jump up and down. Far from ideal, a very annoying user experience. Glad this is fixed because as you can see, while it's moving up and down, it also stops you from clicking whatever you were trying to click. Next one was the Android app crash caused by special file names. I had the same problem. If you have like a large graph with a lot of files in it and there are some special files in there with spaces or weird combination of letters, then it caused the Android app to crash. Now for people that don't often use or look at the back end of their systems, while your idea would be that everything is file-based, most mobile OSs have like a totally different system in the backend than the, what we're used to on our desktop PCs. So that conversion sometimes breaks it and this was the case causing the Android app to crash. And then we have the missing Git SDK in plugin API. Um, for people that don't use Git a lot, Git is a version control system. It was mostly made for the Linux uh, operating system originally and then used in a lot of code that got developed. What you mostly need to do is that Logseek uses that for version control. So Git and Markdown work together very well. It's text and Git can do the versioning. But if you're missing elements in your app image, then 
for some people that will work because they have those elements on their local system installed, but for some people that won't. And by adding the Git SDK in there, it will work for everyone, regardless if they have that separately installed. These kind of bugs happen very often because developers always have these libraries installed and then it gets to end users that do not have these libraries installed and then you start hitting issues and it's usually an easy fix. But um, yeah, you find out when it's in practice and usually not with the developers. I wouldn't notice it as well because I would always be running Git somewhere. That's one of the first things I install on the system. Let's see what we had more. Remove prefix spaces when no intent an indent is used in exporting. So this one's pretty obvious, but it helps a lot. Uh, this is what you would get. You would export this and you would expect this like one, two, three, four. So you can easily copy paste it somewhere. Um, and what you would get if you would make it space is this, meaning that you would still spend time cleaning it up when you were trying to use it in something like an email or other resolution. So this helps a lot. Exporting stuff is pretty hard though for people to get their minds around it, you don't always want the same export. For example, if I export a list and I want to paste it in Excel, I might just want a flat list because Excel is just a, a bunch of rows. If I have a tree view and I copy paste it into an email, for example, I might want that tree view because then I can, you know, forward like notes I made during meetings straight to someone and keep the context of what is relatable to it. And then of course you have the export to things like PDF. I'm trying to make a document if I'm trying to do long form content in Logseq, which it isn't very well in, but there you, you might want like the, uh, the headers. So the, the, the titles to be not indented or not have any bullet points. And you might not want the first text in there because those are the paragraphs, but anything under it, you might want bullets. And they're like, where do you buy, where do you draw the line? Basically, where do you make that change? And that's very dependent on the person meaning that either you have to make hard choices and just say, this is how you're going to get your export, or you have to make it very configurable. But then again, it makes it complex for the end user because they have to do all these switches. Now you see that export problem, for example, in Logseq, when you right click something and say, hey, copy export as you have like all these options in the bottom and that doesn't make it easier to use. Like the top ones help that you can now make like a sub selection or say like, hey, I just want it in a picture or an HTML one but it's still far from ideal. So there's a trade off always between configurability, simplicity, and finding out that you probably can't make it work the way people, like everybody wants it to work. Somebody's gonna have like an edge case that's not gonna be covered by all your configuration options and then complain about it. It's how life is in software development. Then we have the accept video as mobile shared content. So if you're on mobile and you would share a video, Logseq wouldn't show up because it wouldn't be marked as something that can take video and do something with it. And it can, so now it does. I think this is mostly Android, um, but I'm not sure. I don't use iPhone on a daily basis. I know uh, Apple added the whole share bit, but that came later. So then we get the PDF views, areas, highlights, don't blink. This is very useful if you use a lot of PDFs and you mark them. I prepped this, this is in my setup. And now if I click something like this, you see it blinking on the left side, meaning that you know what you selected. I believe it also scrolls towards it. This document is a bit short for it because it's one page. But of course, if it's not blinking, then you don't know like, hey, what is this actually referring to? So I'm glad this got fixed for all the people that use a lot of PDFs for research and the like. Then we have the cannot toggle updated at and created at in query view. Now, this is something that was hitting me all the time. If you do a query like this, you'll have this updated at and created at at the end. And very often I just wanted the updated at, for example, I wanted to see like, hey, I have these free projects. When was the last time I worked on them? But I couldn't because if I would have disabled just created at, then it would not hide any of them. And if I did both, then it would hide both of them. But I couldn't say I just wanted one. And now that's changed. So now if I just say, hey, I just want updated ad, as you can see, it changes it. It's a very small fix, but it's been an annoying bug and it's been in there for a long time. So I'm super glad that now I can make lists that are sorted at when they were last updated and just updated. And I don't have to see the created anywhere, uh, unless of course I'm making a query that's based around that. Then we have the ad support for older Glibc on Linux. Now I'm trying to keep this less technical, but what it mostly means, Glibc is like a core functionality of how things work in Linux. And a lot of people that are using lightweight Linux or older Linux on older hardware, 
they have a older version of that libc library and if there's that if that isn't taken into account it means logseek won't start on those systems so that got fixed then we have the do not notify network status when logged out and this means that like if you were logged out and you didn't have an internet then it would still like go like hey i can't find the internet connection why can't i sync stuff like that and of course if you're logged out you don't want that notification you're aware you're not logged in you don't need it to check the network and one of the places where i would lock out is like if i'm doing like a long flight and i don't have internet and i don't need a reminder from logseek when i'm like two kilometers up in the air somewhere with no internet that hey i can't sync right now well duh so yeah, glad that gets fixed because I don't get like getting dragged out of the flow. And this was one of those small things that did that. Now we have the fix incorrect position for the filter model on iOS platform. Uh, sounds very technical, but what it just means is that things be annoying, yo, because you get something like this filter box and you can't see the text because the keyboard is over it. This fixes that issue. And then the last one is a bit hard to explain, but it's called prevent button in model from being clicked twice when pressing enter key. So what happened there? There's a nice technical drawing, but what it means is that if you would click like a model button, you would press like yes, there would be two enters registered. And that's annoying because when while the first enter will remove the box, like the yes, no question, the second enter might click on something. For example, is, say for example, you'd be on an Amazon website, you want to buy something, you get like, hey, are you sure you wanna to commit to this because there's lots of shipping costs and you're saying like, yes. And then because there's an extra enter, it would hit the button and just say sent and it gets shipped and dragged from your credit card. This is something similar. Like the first enter is no problem. That's what you were expecting. But the second enter can cause all types of weird behavior, getting dragged to another page, getting an extra enter. Those, those are the small ones but you don't exactly know where it's coming from. So this one's hard to debug. I'm glad it's fixed because it will give people less time to where Logseek suddenly does think that they weren't expecting. Those were the fixes. And then we get to the thanks setup and I'm going to go try everybody's names again. So thanks to David Lapus, Alan Rowe, Arnick, EZZ, Elio Veer, Hassi Silu, Petersen, Inge Petersen is probably Norwegian because it's a Norwegian translation thing. Mega U, C2 2001, and Xerox X. I really think that a lot of these people don't pick their uh, usernames based on pronounceability, but that's fine. I'll tumble through it. If I pronounced it wrong, let me know in the comments and I'll try to do it better next time. Give me a hint on how I should be saying it. And then remember, you're awesome. Keep it up.